In this video, I want to do a little bit more of a deep dive into the actual animation menus. We'll start with the melee menu and kind of go through these all the way up through auras and cover active effects. Presets will be a different video because it's kind of separate and apart from these standard animations. What you see and what you'll notice is the same on each of these menus expand these we'll start with the header bar uh, range melee and on tokens animation menus have uh, the preview button which will spawn a video preview it has a 3d canvas which you can use for rippers 3d canvas module this uses their particle animation system you can set sound only for a section or you can add a macro and choose how to play it. Uh, we'll do more specifically on macros at a later time, but you can set these to only play a macro. Templates has templates and the rest of the menus have everything but the 3D canvas option. So you can see the previews, set sound only, and add macros. Each of these first five menus also have a source animation option a secondary animation option and the target animation option. These all kind of sandwich the, what we call the primary animation. This is the only one you need to have set up. Everything else is optional. The source animation is set to play only on the, uh, the token that is using the item. We call that our source token. The secondary animation is designed along with the target animation to play on any targets that you have attacking. So if you activate these you'll see you can select all the relevant options, sounds for each section and play them just like, like you can chain them and in multiple different ways and what we're gonna do is cover that in kind of a separate video just do a deep dive into that to how you can set these up to do multiple multiple different things but for each primary section you'll have your select menus which you can select from that are built into AA or you can select a custom animation uh, you can use the file picker button here to browse normally or you can open the sequencer database viewer if you have the JB2A module active and search through there you can copy database paths directly in here it'll accept those it'll also accept file paths Uh, each section is going to have its own options. Options being different for each particular section. Uh, you can use the info button here next to the options to open up and get a quick reference of what each of these options does and how it affects the animation. Uh, and this is reactive, so if you change menus and you want to update, it'll open it up on the direct menu that you should be on. Uh, more specifically, as far as the primary animation is concerned, these this is what differs between each of these first five menus. Melee animations, in particular, require targets and are designed to play... Well, that was the wrong animation. I'll have to figure that out. But these are designed to play, essentially... No, oh, it was the correct animation, sorry. I had all these others active start that back over. Melee animations are designed to mimic attack animations in a in Foundry VTT. For this in particular, if it has a ranged animation that matches the selected one through the select menus, the range switch will activate when your token gets further away. This is on by default. You can change it to off to disable it, or you can even customize it to set it to a specific one but you'll see here when this token backs up it'll switch to a range dagger animation uh, and as I said you can even customize it say if we wanted for some reason to shoot an arrow from range versus playing a dagger up front you will see I think I mentioned every section will have its own sound that you can set to play 
Uh, let's not blow everybody's eardrums out here. Set this to half volume. And you'll see you can set a sound to play with each animation section. Ranged animations, much like the range switch on the melee, are specifically for playing animations between two targets or two tokens. This does require targeting. You'll see here it basically plays and stretches the animation in between two different tokens. The on token menu uh, much like its name, is designed to play animations directly on a token. For example, we'll use Cure Wounds here. And you see I have it set to play on targets. You can set this also to play only on the source token, both tokens, or on targets, but defaulting back to self, or the source token, if there are no targets. Now the templates menu is designed specifically to play animations on templates when placed on the canvas in Foundry VTT. Uh, these have multiple different options but I'll show you here what we have set up for Cone of Cold. Uh, I have these set on mine to remove the templates after I place them. So the animation is unfettered by the template. You'll see the lightning bolt go off here. Oh, see, I didn't tell that one to remove the template. These can also be set to persistent animations. Uh, we'll cover this and I'll backtrack and show you the on token persistent as well. Um, Let's make Cone of Cold a persistent animation with a sequencer effect. Now I'm removing the template, but what it's going to do is start and play the animation, and it's just going to continually loop it until you delete that. For sequencer effects, you can use the sequencer effects viewer and manually delete them. You could also attach it to the template when doing so it should not delete the template unless I need to fix that. Nope, it did not. So using the attach to template method is a sequencer effect that attaches it to the template and you can rotate and move it around the game canvas like this. And when you delete the template it does delete the animation. Uh, specifically for fog cloud, let me bring that spell in. and set this quickly as a cantrip, easier casting sequencer, or not sequencer, I have this set up as a persistent animation using overhead tile so when I cast a fog cloud it's going to remove the template and it's going to create an overhead tile effect so I'm in the GM view so it may not do this correctly but this acts as an overhead tile and the player would see this as kind of opaque when they move underneath it. And as always, delete tiles through the tile layer. Now you can also choose to set it as a ground tile, so that conversely is going to be below the tokens when it's placed on the game canvas, so they can walk over it. Good for spells like Entangle or whatever you wish. Now let me back up and talk about persistent animations to show those on the on token menu these have the options to set it as well so I'm going to set a persistent uh, cure wounds effect on this acolyte and you'll see it's persistent it stays with the token until you remove it now for that as well we'll move on to the aura menu what auras are they're designed to be for effects that emanate from a token. Now these are always persistent effects, so they will have to be either manually removed or removed through some sort of concentration with an automated automated module or automation module in 5e. Some other systems may do that automatically as well. Show you an example here. I have Spirit Guardian set up. 
So when we cast Spirit Guardians, uh, I think this one, I have a template on that one, so I need to place the template to get everything rolling. You see it sticks and attaches to the token and moves with it. Uh, we'll remove that effect. Uh, auras differ from the on token in, in, in a few aspects. First, they, like I said, they are always persistent. You cannot make them just regular animations. Um, they have also an effect menu, so you can change the effect of the persistence. So let's say I want this breathing effect, so I have uh, this scaling from 0.95 to 0.105 on a 1000 millisecond loop, so a one second loop. So when I cast Spirit Guardians, you'll see it's just going to sit there and kind of rebound and have this slight breathing effect at the end. You can also have it set to fade like in and out of visibility. Show this here kind of paired with the breathing effect. So you see it fades in, fades out. You can set the amount and the duration on each of these. And the other effect option that auras have is you can apply a tint over the top of the animation to change the color. You saw that was a yellow animation. We'll leave it a zero saturation. And when we now cast Spirit Guardians, you'll have a green filter effect over the top of it. So that's the kind of good overview of the differences and similarities between all of these. Uh, we'll get into more advanced configuration later. Uh, one last thing I want to show you for this is the active effect menu. When you are choosing animations through here, you can choose it to act as either an on token or an aura effect, which would be just like setting it up through here, but are specifically for foundry active effects. Effects set through this menu would automatically remove themselves when the act active effect is removed. So let's say we have quick one, we have this as the prone condition for whatever reason, we have it persistent. I'm going to set this token to prone. So you see that animation is going to just stick on there and stay with the token because I have it set to persistent and it's going to stay on there and I, I can manually remove it through sequencer or when I remove the active effect it will also remove that, that animation. So in the next couple of videos we're going to go over presets uh, show you the options in there and then we'll do a kind of a a deep dive to show advanced configuration on some of these animations and how you can how you can really make some things pop with them